Hello there Reason people, Boo Bear here and welcome to my channel. Today's Food for Thought is to do with decentralization, distributing, offloading, call it what you want, it has many names. You can't be serious man, you cannot be serious! This is one of them dialogue boxes we don't wish to see, especially when it's inconvenient to bounce out those big hitters. So I had this little thought, and to be honest, I did play around with this in Reason 7, however latency was quite a big issue then. So what am I talking about? Well, let me show you. And don't forget, this is serious stuff. So let's go ahead and clean up this error. And that DSP is a little too high. Take two. As you can see, I've managed to get a lower DSP level without having to bounce out any tracks or change any effects. So how can this be done? Well, let's take a step back in time. So you used to have a piece of hardware, and when we wanted more power, we added more hardware. And again, when we wanted more power, we added yet more hardware. And the problem nowadays with software is people keep adding more and more VSTs and rack extensions and they don't think about the hardware and there comes a time when you would, you would need to add more or new hardware and upgrading all the time can be very costly. So let's have a look at an old school solution. We have Reason running on this computer so the old school method we add another computer and we don't stop there we can have more and more and more but of course we have to think about how the signals are getting backwards and forth. So the more you add, the more complicated it can get. So how are these devices communicating with each other? Well, simply over MIDI, good old fashioned MIDI. And there's two ways we can configure the MIDI. One way will be using a sync clock. So the master will send out the clock to the slave and all the sequential data uh, and automation data will actually be on the slave. So the advantage is, if you do a lot of automation, you'd want to use, say, something like a sync clock. The disadvantage is, you're going to end up having files, you're going to have to sync backwards and forth, or you're going to run two separate files. Um, so it does get a little bit more complicated there. The other method would be to use the EMI. The big advantage of the EMI is you can have all the sequence of data in the master file, so you just send out the MIDI data. The disadvantage comes with automation. It becomes a little bit trickier, but I will later on show you my workflow. So let, let's have a quick look at my hardware. My master happens to be this laptop down here, and my slave happens to be this PC over here. Now this PC is it's well over eight years old, um, it could even be nine years. Um, it's got an original i7-920 chip in there, and it's still got quite a nice bit of power behind it, even though it's such an old PC. From that, obviously, I've got my uh, external audio from that PC, which uh, that's got the MIDI in the back. I'm using this simple MIDI cable, which is obviously then plugged into my laptop. I'm also taking audio out of the, the, the slave, and I'm routing that back into my laptop. I've also routed it to my mixer, so I could actually just mix and send these straight to my mix and if I had another PC I could even feed that into there but let's not overcomplicate things. I'm going to take you through my workflow now and I'm also going to be jumping in and out of how you set certain things up but basically obviously this main display here that's connected to my laptop I've got a Nectar keyboard here which is connected to my laptop I've got obviously a keyboard <laughs> typing keyboard and mouse connected to the laptop this little keyboard is connected to my desktop or slave and obviously this reason session over here is also um, obviously running on my desktop slave. However, the monitor is connected to my laptop um, and I'm using terminal server, I'm sorry, I mean remote desktop to connect to it. Um, bit old school there, terminal server. Um, I used to use another application called Clipsock, which is a way of sharing the clipboard amongst multiple PCs, and I'm pretty sure Apple should have something very similar, and it's quite important. Also on this, um, and as you can see I can use the same mouse, on this reason session over here, it's actually running in demo mode. And of course in demo mode, we haven't got any 
open and we can't bounce anything. Uh, I'm sort of doing that just so we, uh, I don't get any into any licensing violations issues. I actually do have more, one copy of Reason, but I thought I'd do it this way. And I will show you a few little getaway arounds how you can actually get stuff in and out. So we've got ourselves obviously a device running on here, and as you'll expect, if I play my little keyboard, I'm playing over on my right screen. However, obviously I'm getting the audio back onto my main reason session here on my left screen. The nice little thing is though, I can come straight onto my nectar, which is plugged into my laptop. Yeah, and I've actually got control of it. You know, I can also um, say I'm gonna just do a quick edit or override here. So I've now can use my nectar and I've actually now controlling. So this is on my desktop, which I'm now controlling. Yeah. So this is how the workflow can work. But I'm going to take it a few step a few steps further, and so you can see how certain things, you know, setting up as this sort of method really can work. So over here, I'm going to just quickly grab myself. It's a tractor, and I'm going to be playing a straightforward snare. And the reason I want to do this is to show how we, as I said, I, I, I tried doing this sort of stuff in Reason 7. It didn't really work because of latency. But obviously with the Reason 9.5, um, we've got obviously delay compensation, and that's what we're going to be using as well. So I've got a drum. And in fact, I've got myself a simple little. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this. In fact, I don't want to do that one, so copy device and tracks. And I'm just going to paste it over here. Okay. So now I've got my, my snare in that over here. I've actually even you know, got the data. But what I'm going to do here is just pull this down into my EMI and you can hear yeah we've got a delay going on so if I turn my delay compensation on we're more or less in sync it's slightly out but we're more or less in sync now yeah so one thing I haven't talked about yet is well how come my uh, nectar has, has been controlling devices over there I've actually got obviously an EMI here and as I said to you earlier, we can use EMI to communicate and just send straight MIDI data out. And so that's what I've got here. So I've got a track here, which is on my EMI, which is sending data out. And obviously I've got um, that data, which is obviously controlling that subtractor as well. As I said to you earlier as well, it's, it gets quite a bit more complicated when we start doing automation. As you saw earlier, I could actually do automation because I could record exactly what I was doing over here on my nectar, I can actually record that automation and it starts to get complicated though if I want to do several things because I've got to have several EMIs to be able to do that to send out all the different CCs. So as I said to you before, if I was doing loads of automation, I'll actually write it and I'll actually do a sync clock over here. So what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to delete this out of the EMI and what we're going to do now is I'm going to actually sync and I'm going to use a sync clock now. So I'm going to click on there to sync clock and then on my slave we're going to turn this into a MIDI clock. So then theoretically hopefully when I now click play here on my master it automatically is now playing over there on my remote. Now slightly out that's because obviously when we're sending MIDI in and out, there's a slightly different latency. So how do we get this into shape? Well, as you can see, it's coming back on this uh, mix channel. If I flip around to the back, here's my sample delay. Yeah, so obviously I can bring that down and you can hear it going right out. And if I go push it right up, it's still out. So you need to play around with this sort of thing 
until it sounds about right. It's not too far out. So there we go. We've touched on two things. Of one of how we can actually send a MIDI clock. Another one of how we can actually send um, EMI data. So we've touched on both of them. As I said earlier as well, is we can grab, say, a whole bunch of stuff from over here. So it's going to grab this stuff here. Let's quickly do a copy. And then over here, we can obviously paste this in. So now, obviously, we've got data in. So, you know, as I said, there's no file open, but obviously, I can copy over a complete file if I want. So, as I said, we can't export from here, but there's nothing which stops me to do a bounce in place. And then obviously one of the things you can do from here now is if I right click on this, I can go bounce, bounce click to disk. Yeah, so I can just click on that and obviously I can now just save that WAV file out. So you can actually export your audio data out if you wish to. That kind, well actually it doesn't quite wrap it up. The other thing obviously uh, what I have done on this side is as I say, we can set up the EMI that it can come in via, obviously, the advanced MIDI, and you can obviously set here and go, oh, this is going to channel, and this is where I'm going to go to. I actually prefer to set them up as surface controllers. So I'll set myself up these surface controllers, and they're, li they're listening on two different channels. That's channel one, that's channel two. Um, if you, you won't, as standard, have this codex on your systems. Um, I'll put it in the link of actually where you can download it from. But more importantly, how you get this all set up. Um, I've got a video to do with 101 setting up external MIDI devices. Because at the end of the day, this reason is external to this reason. And this, obviously, reason is external to that reason. So it doesn't matter the fact that they're both running reason to my hardware. It's, it's exactly the same sort of setup when we're talking to MIDI. So it doesn't matter. So have a look at that video and it'll tell you exactly how you can get all this sort of stuff set up. And once you've got that set up, I think automation becomes a lot easier. Um, because you can do obviously automation, you can send stuff down the advanced MIDI. But I find it a really, really, really messy way of doing it. So I stay away from it and I set up service controllers and I can bring it in that way. So this kind of ends my, my presentation of how we can... Um, get some big hitters over on this side and obviously we can control them. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.